Hello, everyone. It's Miguel Sam Possible. I'm Migos. My name is Taff 16 Welcome back to another reaction video, and welcome to another reaction to Have I Got News for You. So today, we're going to be watching a pretty significant episode in the show's history. This is Series 24, Episode 2, and it is the last ever episode hosted by Angus Deaton. Yeah, that's dark. Yoink. October 25th, 2002. Good evening and welcome to Have I Got News For You, which this series sadly won't be featuring Prince Charles as a guest, despite our best endeavours. I'm afraid we are unable to accept your invitation. As I'm sure you will understand, His Royal Highness receives many similar requests and sadly we are unable to accede to them all. <laughs> Looks like never mind the Buzzcocks has beaten us to it again. Damn. In the news this week, on a clifftop in Devon, two peeping Tom, Spot and Widdicombe skinny dipping. At a garden party in Kent, organisers regret allowing John Prescott to help himself to the curried eggs. <laughs> <laughs> and in Eastbourne, after taking nine hours to get to the shops, a pensioner begins to suspect that she may have wrongly assembled her IKEA Zimmer frame. Close enough. On Ian Hislop's team, please welcome someone who's teetotal and a unique comedian, in as much as he's teetotal, Ross Noble. Oh! I've seen, um, a film he did, Stitches. Uh, he was, a cl he was the, an evil clown. I did a movie review of that on my movie review channel. I don't know if I've ever seen him in anything on this channel, though. Now that I think about it. I have now. And with Paul Merton tonight, a Labour MP described by Matthew Paris as a man who could start a fight in an empty room, which may explain <laughs> the state we found his dressing room in just before he came on, <laughs> Gerald Kaufman. <laughs> with round one is how we start, and vice versa. Ian and Ross. Well, there's Estelle Morris saying, I'm useless, I resign. Um, Blair saying, I'm useless, I don't resign. <laughs> <laughs> John Peel. Uh, <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, Charles Clark, wasn't it, who's taken over? Because mm. Morris has just gone, right, that's it. I've, uh, I'm off. You know, if I don't do it properly, then I'm just going to resign and that's it. And she's been taken over by a bloke who uh, used to be a Toby jug. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's Charles Clark. Yeah, yeah, that's right. He's yeah. taking her job over rather than taking her over. Yeah, no, actually yeah. taking her over. That's yeah. Like, yeah. He's going uh, to set her up as a small shop. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't this a rare case of somebody resigning for the sake of the programme? Uh, government. <laughs> government. Yeah. Government. Not programme, yeah. government. I meant, meant government, I said programme, but I should have said government. Yeah. Not programme, forget programme, just It was government. an easy mistake to make. It, mm. Really, was it? Yeah. <laughs> I forgot how much I like needed quite I'm a lot of organisation <laughs> where I was sitting. <laughs> there's a phone call, there's yeah. a knock at the door. There's a lot of stamina too. <laughs> Can I talk about Estelle Morris just briefly? Is yeah, that okay? yeah, certainly. Um, I'd rather hear about the sort of details of yeah, it. Right. Right. Oh, wait, what the hell happened? There's a phone call, there's yeah. a knock at the door. I was about to pause, but <laughs> I, I forgot. I watched the episode, um... I watched the episode, like, right after the allegations came out. Well, I guess they weren't allegations. Like, I think they actually happened. But right after the stuff about him came out. And, yeah, I forgot how harsh they were to him. And apparently I read that they were just, like... Because I think Paul was, like, friends with his wife, or Paul, Paul, Paul's wife and his wife were friends, so Paul took it kind of personally. But damn, yeah, they, uh, they want him gone. They got him gone after that. <laughs> Could I talk about Estelle Morris just briefly? Is yeah, that okay? yeah, certainly. Um, I'd rather hear about the sort of details of yeah, it, if you yeah, would. Yeah. <laughs> so would just I, a little bit. Honest. Go on. Yeah. Just a, just a tiny if bit. If I knew what they were, I'd tell you, I promise. Um, <laughs> That's as unconvincing. <laughs> <laughs> Anything I've ever heard. Yes, let's talk about politics. The stream of sleaze can wait. Yes. Uh, <laughs> the final straw. What Jesus. did you say it was? 
Um, oh, we're back to this. Yeah. So, yes, right. Uh, I think the final straw was, you know, she was overcome with honesty. She said she'd made a complete mess of it. It was the A-levels, it was trying to get those people expelled when they, she didn't have the power to do it. And then there was a promise. She said, um, if children don't pass these exams in three years, um, I'll resign. And then she forgot she'd said that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> anyway, she's had to go. And um, what was Tony Blair's response? <laughs> 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 The problem here is that the priority was going to be education. Um, and then it was going to be schools, and then it was going to be hospitals, and then it was going to be education again. And so he's got to put someone in there who will do something rather than just talk. I hadn't realised this was a serious political programme. Gerald, you should, yeah. you should watch it more often. <laughs> <laughs> it's because I watch it so often that I hadn't realised it. <laughs> what about her replacement, Charles Clark? Is he the best possible replacement for her? Of course he's the best possible replacement. Whoever would have replaced Estelle would have been the best possible <laughs> uh, Yes, this is the resignation of uh, Education Secretary Estelle Morris. Chris Woodhead, the former head of Ofsted, uh, praised Estelle Morris for her decision and said he was full of admiration for her. He then added, although I was amazed she was appointed in the first place. <laughs> There's a gullibility about her and a failure to get any intellectual grip. Holy shit! She was in way over her head. She had no real understanding of what she was talking about. Oh, fuck. Uh, with admiration like that, who needs criticism? Yeah. <laughs> Paul and Gerald, you're not on Channel 5. Uyuika Johnson, um, Matthew Wright, who was, uh, that's him on this show, in fact. And the section of newspapers there with the cut-out details, uh, the things that were cut out was the name of the man behind this uh, accusation. And uh, Sky Television and ITN have named him, but the BBC have got a policy at the moment of not naming him. So that's I right. can't oh. give you the answer you're looking for. <laughs> I didn't know about this. It wasn't you, was it? Um, <laughs> are we are allowed to refer to him as Mr X. Why will the BBC not allow this man's name I to don't be mentioned know. when ITV will? Oh. Yeah, I don't know. This is a question for the lawyers. I've no, I've no idea. I suppose it's what I just a bit old-fashioned me, but I always thought if you'd been raped, you rang up the police rather than a publisher. <laughs> I suppose the basic reason he's not being named is because he hasn't been proved guilty yet. There's been a jury of one so far called Ulrika. And the this BBC has a history of covering up rapists. It's been a week where you sit there thinking, is there anything else going on in this country apart from a bunch of Z-list celebrities having sex with each other? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I never heard about this. And the answer, answer depressingly that. seems to be no. No, yes. <laughs> yeah, so, but it, so, also, it also seems that Matthew Wright has got, uh, Matthew Wright's got some sort of showbiz Tourette's where he can't hold anything inside. <laughs> He's just got so much gossip. He's just like, oh, that's happened. <laughs> you know? I can't, uh, what was there, was there any result of this, by the way? Anyone who remembers? Because I've, I've never heard about this. It's like he spent so long as a gossip column, it's like he hears anything and he just, no, don't tell anyone. He goes, guess what's just happened? <laughs> and he just blurted out. Yes. All and, the time. And Ulrika, in the meantime, uh, is launching her book and also launching a new TV show, which is called... Mr. Right. Ironically, yes. <laughs> this is well uh, the continuing media frenzy following the uh, accidental naming of a man in connection with Ulrika Johnson's claims of assault. In her uh, autobiography, Honest, Ulrika Johnson neither confirms nor denies that she had a relationship with Prince Edward. The last thing I wanted was to be famous by association, said the prince. <laughs> Many observers have questioned the truth of some of the claims made in Ulrika's autobiography, such as this on page 260. Gladiators that year turned out to be spectacularly enjoyable. They're particularly enjoyable. <laughs> yes. If you're losing the skill to read out loud, you really are in trouble. They should go blind, does yeah. it? <laughs> uh, Ian and Ross, your burning issue of the day. Oh, the fireman, yes, this that's, should be number three on any that's agenda. That's the new dancer yeah. at Stringfellows there. <laughs> well, There's a, a roll the hose competition. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a licorice all sort factory there. There's, Bob Crow? That's a, a train, obviously, I'm not that stupid. going at full speed. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So what's about to happen then? The, um, they're going on strike, aren't they? The, uh, mm. the fire brigade and they're getting in the army. 
There was a rather funny bit in Prime Minister's Question Time this week when Ian Duncan Smith said to Tony Blair, he said, now, you know, there's going to be this strike, so we've got to get these soldiers in there. They should be practising with this equipment now. The equipment that we've got in the fire station, they must practise with it now. We'll give them the equipment to practise with it now. And Tony Blair looked at him and said, well, we can't do that because it's being used by the firemen. <laughs> <laughs> That's the kind of advice they're doing, because there was one guy who was on the news and he was saying, uh, they're going, oh, what should we do if a fire kicks off? And this bloke, you know, he was, like, that far from going, just buy, like, loads of marshmallows and just stand around. <laughs> so, and what was uh, John Prescott's advice this week? Stay in the bath. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let your home catch fire. <laughs> yes, uh... Uh, so what are the knock-on effects we saw? The tube. The, the, the tube drivers yeah. have said that... that yeah, it's... for reasons of safety. But Bob Crow, in a, a rather charming way, said, I'm very worried about the safety of my members not the safety of the public. And um, what's the emergency committee that's been set up? Is it them fellas from Trumpton? Yeah. Two, two, you found him in the room, cuff and dimble and grow. God's not been feeling well lately. <laughs> Uh, his brother. Right. You're completely out of date. They resigned. Fireman Sam's taken over. Oh, oh no. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, New room is much better. There's only it? one of him, you know, and there's lots of you, Pew, and all that. Oh, like no, there's see. Fireman Sam's mates. There's Elvis and all those others. Elvis? Elvis? Yeah. <laughs> there's one that looks like Elvis, or perhaps I've been dreaming. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. So, Gerald, you were surprised that there was a oh, serious a discussion ago. program, you were saying? Yes, and I, I'm still surprised. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I, I, I think that this is as intellectual a television programme as you will find. How the, dare you! The, <laughs> <laughs> you come along as a guest and you bad mouth us like that. <laughs> I thought the whole I, I thought the whole point about being a guest here was either to badmouth or be badmouthed, and calling this program an intellectual <laughs> program was as low as I could see. <laughs> yes. We're following Fame Academy. Come no. on! <laughs> Apparently, the winner of that's going to host this show. Do you know? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know about that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, far off. But, but that doesn't finish for months. Oh no! It must mm. be wrong then. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Uh, this is the uh, imminent fireman strike with the government re uh, rejecting their 40% claim. Uh, the Times looked back to the previous winter of discontent in 1979, a time when newspapers failed to appear and no one knew what was going on. Uh, Suits me. <laughs> yeah, I'm down. Well, you'd rather people didn't know what you were up to? That was the sort of joke, Ian, mm, to be it's honest not with you. <laughs> Not terribly funny, though, is it? Uh, many commentators have spotted the parallels Jesus. in 1979. Back then, there was a winter of discontent <laughs> looming, just like now. Back then, a complacent Labour government was losing its grip, just like now. And back then, a resurgent Tory party with a dynamic new leader was poised to seize power. Paul and Gerald. <laughs> uh, finally, in this round. Whoa, 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 whoa. To simulate an earthquake. This is Manchester. That's, that's some of the damage. Bricks and toilet rolls have fallen off uh, supermarket shelves. It's a standard bricks and toilet roll earthquake. And that's one of those things that says there's been a quake and there's a bloke saying these bloody quakes. I've picked that up and I'm going to put it down there. <laughs> Fifteen quakes in Manchester there's been. Quake City. Quake City. The first joke ever mm -hmm. has come out of Manchester Town Hall. This is a city on the move, they say. <laughs> <laughs> The largest one was in Dudley, that was last month, uh, which was 5.1, which apparently was 45 times worse. Except you wouldn't notice in Dudley. <laughs> uh, so what was some of the damage done in this uh, horrific... All bricks, toilet rolls? The toilet rolls especially. Yeah. yeah. Right, the, the, the only way they could clear that up, they, they sent in loads of uh, little puppies. Yeah. Just... <laughs> <laughs> uh, and there was a chimney pot that fell off uh, near Clayton. Who's Clayton? <laughs> <laughs> Is he a friend of Dudley? Thank you. <laughs> uh, there were also 400 dogs that started barking. The Andrex puppies. Be there. <laughs> this is the continuing devastation of British cities by 24 terrifying earthquakes. Uh, the quakes led to various scientific explanations being sought. Uh, one expert told The Sun, earthquakes can happen anywhere and tend to be random. As far as what causes them, we don't know. <laughs> Thank God for experts. Yeah. <laughs> On the plus side, though, there is some good news, as a Manchester Earthquake Appeal Fund has already been set up in Turkey. So, <laughs> at the end of that round, the score is like Estelle Morris's appointments diary. There's nothing in it, being as it is for all. Ah! 
What the so fuck? to the linguistic prowess of sub-editors everywhere as we seek to explain away such cryptic illusions as the Brit Parade, Ian and Ross. Is that the, uh, the thing? <laughs> Is it? Yeah. The, what, what it, the Brit Awards have decided that they're not going to have a big celebrity do. I think you're probably um, right. I, I stupidly thought it was... The Great Britain series. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, uh, yeah. No, it, it's <laughs> yeah that's right, yeah. Launched on Sunday. And uh, it's, yeah, uh, John Lennon competing against Princess Diana, and I reckon they'll not be able to decide, and they'll just go, ah, oh, give it to Sue Pollard. <laughs> it's a very, very upmarket list. Wouldn't it be great if it was just the whole cast of Heidi High? Wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Ted <laughs> Bovis. <laughs> yeah, Ted <laughs> Bovis. Quick spy, get the funny Lord Nelson, come on. <laughs> Who would be your favourite Britain, Ian? Well, I was amazed in the list there were no artists at all. Um, none. Right. Hogarth, didn't make it. Turner, mm -hmm. Constable. Mm -hmm. Michael Crawford, obviously. Boy George, very important. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Robbie Williams. Well, Robbie Williams did win Musician of the Millennium on Channel 4, didn't he? And Mozart yeah. was third. <laughs> <laughs> not many politicians in, uh, in the top 100. Do you know how many there are? Who were Churchill, they? Thatcher, current. I mean, current no, Boy Thatcher, George. Churchill doesn't count as a politician. Churchill transcends politics. Uh, Thatcher is there. Lloyd Blair George. is there. Is he? he is, yeah. Enoch Powell was there, and I'm sure Lloyd ben, George was in. Uh, Tony yeah. Ben, oh. who is described as a politician by those who have never met him. <laughs> Damn! You don't get on very well with Tony Benn, do you? Oh, I get on very, very, very well with Tony Benn. Ever since he left the House of Commons, I've gone on with Tony <laughs> Benn. Really. There was uh, another well, important survey this week, I don't know, because this was the other half of the question. Um, well, it accompanied this one. It was that most people in Britain in a survey knew who the people from Big Brother were, and they had no idea who the Cabinet were. They could name... Sound um, about right. Phil Mitchell from EastEnders, mm -hmm. but they didn't know who Saddam Hussein was. <laughs> they did know who Tony Blair was. They knew who Tony Blair was more than they knew Big Brother. 83%. Really? That's fantastic. He was so mm. he's better known than Jade. <laughs> <laughs> but at this moment, not as well known as the name of the man whose name we can't name in this programme. Yes. Whose name is known to everybody who isn't watching this programme. I'd never heard of Sat him at the beginning of this week. And yet you'd heard of Jade. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's reading the papers. You find out the most interesting things <laughs> about people. How did I guess? Uh, this is the, oh, the list man. of uh, 100 Great Britons as compiled for the BBC. Uh, despite criticism of uh, some of the names excluded from the list, the BBC has denied accusations of dumbing down, pointing out that Kipling was only left out because his cakes weren't actually that good anyway. <laughs> You know, it, only it, it's like it, uh, to point out the obvious. Uh, I, I got to say though, if I like just watched this with no context, you know, I'd probably assume that they were just ribbing each other. But like, God, no, it's legit heat. <laughs> Makes it so uncomfortable. <laughs> Excluded from the list, the BBC has denied accusations of dumbing down, pointing out that Kipling was only left out because his cakes weren't actually that good anyway. <laughs> only 17% of males could name five world leaders, but that is still four more than George Bush could manage. <laughs> Paul and Gerald, your spinnerism. Booze, crews, bruisers. These are the customs men who are harassing pensioners by taking away the cigarettes they've bought on the cruises on which they've gone as far as France in order to get cigarettes and liquor. And when they come back, their stuff is taken away from them. And in one case, a pensioner was left marooned while her bus left without her. They may not be able to find explosives in shoes, <laughs> but they are able to keep pensioners isolated. <laughs> It has to Damn. be said, it's not easy strip-searching pensioners with all those flaps of skin. <laughs> <laughs> and what else have customers and excise been cracking down on uh, this week? I was going to say Thank drugs, you. but that, that would have been stupid. <laughs> <laughs> uh, cooking oil converted into car fuel. Oh, they're doing this in uh, Clinically, aren't they? Mm. Yeah, they get 15 chips to the gallon. <laughs> <laughs> and do you know how they detect uh, eco-diesel? They smell it going around, you know, if it, looks, if it smells like you're driving a chip shop, they pull you over. <laughs> uh, and there is another fuel source, which is uh, chicken droppings, um, which can be turned into fuel as well. How do you get the chicken to crap into the bloody thing? <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah. Do you squeeze it or something? Yeah. Aim it at the nozzle? What would he do? Open it up. Have the Iraqis got a lot of chickens? Do you think we should invade? <laughs> Uh, this yeah. is the Sun newspaper's campaign to stop customs officers targeting day trippers who've been stocking up on cheap tobacco and alcohol. One lorry driver was stopped for having ten times over the recommended allowance, although they let him through and he pointed out it belonged to the Albanians hanging onto his axle. <laughs> Which unsavoury customs mean at this uh, particular checkpoint, neither team seems unduly taxed, being as it is six all. <laughs> Uh, round three is where things really start to happen. A brace of odd ones, but which and why, Ian and Ross, your uh, people's favourites, are Elton John, Harold Wilson, Tariq Aziz and Saddam Hussein. Good Lord. Is this Cuban cigars? Saddam had Cuban cigars sent in and so did the other two that are smoking and Elton John just smuggles in cigars in his hair and glasses. <laughs> <laughs> What are those things that seem to be sort of sticking on him? He's the yeah. world's first human kaplunk. <laughs> <laughs> that could be it. If you pull those out, then a, a popular hit falls out of his mouth. I think he might have something to do with his moustaches, because Howard Wilson Absolutely. had a little moustache, didn't he, in the 1950s? Howard Wilson had a moustache, these people had moustaches. Elton, Elton John Elton is had the his one tash one because he hasn't grafted had... onto his head. <laughs> <laughs> Elton John's the odd one out, he's never had a moustache. Is the wrong answer also. It's to do with the revelation of one of your colleagues, George Galloway. Oh, that Saddam, oh, he likes some marmite, is it? Or tomato ketchup? HP sauce. HP sauce. Oh, only Saddam Hussein now. is on this, is the one who doesn't like HP sauce. I think they all do. <laughs> Ian is completely wrong because Gerald got it absolutely right. Uh, well, well <laughs> Uh, they're all fans of HP Sauce, uh, except Sedan, uh, who in fact was recently revealed to be a fan of Quality Street <laughs> chocolates. Perhaps he just likes dressing up as the bloke on the tin. <laughs> <laughs> According to George Galloway, uh, there's HP Sauce every time you sit down with Tariq Aziz. That's not true. Well, I once sat down with Tariq Aziz and there was not HP Sauce. Yeah. I had dinner with him in his private bu bungalow in Baghdad yep. and it was Heinz tomato ketchup, actually. Yeah. Ah, really. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah but well, he kept the good stuff under the table. <laughs> <laughs> You're a big fan of Saddam, aren't you? Sure. Me? Yes. You said I prefer to see Saddam Hussein as London Mayor than Ken Livingston. That doesn't mean I'm a fan of Saddam Hussein. No, right. <laughs> OK. Uh, yes, the answer is that they're all fans of uh, HP Source, except for Saddam Hussein, who was recently revealed to be a fan of Quality Street chocolates. In an interview with the Sunday Telegraph, uh, Tariq Aziz claimed, the Iraqi opposition is a joke. The joke being, knock, knock, who's there? No one, you've had us all shot. <laughs> uh, Paul and Gerald, uh, your prize quartet looks and indeed sounds like this. Oh, this one slaps. Ah. <laughs> okay. Um. <laughs> the last one is Mike Bat. Oh, it's Mike Bat's silence. He yes, got into John Cage. With it. Yes. He, uh, John Cage, the uh, uh, experimental composer, uh, composed a piece of silence in the 1950s. It was something like 3 minutes 55, it's called. And uh, Mike Batt has um, also uh, composed a piece of silence on his last record. And uh, he's sort of got into trouble with that. Pasha Bell, the uh, canon there, the next one next to him, um, what's his name, Pete Waterman, is it? He said that he yeah. used that melody as inspiration for a Kylie Minogue song. Is the fact that Batt is the only one who credited them? Waterman nicked all the tunes and never credited them. Uh, it's not quite right, no. Mike Batt's the only one who's got into trouble. Well, it's the, sort of the other way round. The answer is that all the composers have had their melodies ripped off for pop songs, uh, whereas Mike Batt uh, borrowed extensively, is how we've been asked to phrase it, um, <laughs> from the composer John Cage. So what's happened? Has he had to give John Cage's uh, lawyers some money? He did, yes, £100,000. <laughs> uh, they settled out of court. Uh, hundred grand? Yeah. Silence um, is golden. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bach's air on a G-string was nicked by 
Procol Harum. Uh, for a white shape. Oh, white shape. Does he really? Yeah. yeah. How come and Pasha Bell doesn't get a proper picture? He just gets a sort of pen and ink drawing done by a court artist. Yeah. The picture is just very pasty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> speaking of his extraordinary success in the 80s, Pete Waterman said, I should be so lucky exploded, and with it, we exploded as well. We should be so lucky. <laughs> Which uh, rapid decomposition means at the end of this set two, it's uh, Paul and Gerald uh, who are calling the tune nice. ahead as they are. Nine six. <laughs> And so to the homely charms of our final missing words round, a variety of oblongs masking vital parts, each and every one taken from this week's newspapers, with the exception of those from tonight's guest publication, the toweringly impressive Diarrhea Digest. <laughs> what? Which blissfully describes itself as an irregular publication. Yeah. <laughs> So, stand by for the oven that thinks what? There's more to life than cooking. <laughs> the oven that thinks it's a, a hoover. It is a domestic appliance, yes. A George Foreman multi-grill. Yeah. <laughs> um, toaster. Uh, Electric kettle. Cuddly cut toy. Just, just um, to the left of the kettle. Uh, 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 his and hers matching just bathrobes. To the, to the right of the to cooker. The, to the right fridge. of the fridge. The fridge, yes. Freeze. Microwave. Oh. Uh, next, the Rolf's what to hang what? Desire to hang sick animals. <laughs> that one, I <laughs> He's just, you know, he's just fed up with the animal hospital. <laughs> just, <laughs> just to put it, you know. Painting uh, National Gallery. Gallery. Yeah. Uh, classics, yes. Uh, um, to, Harris to hang in the oh. National. Yes, this is the National Not Gallery. Not anymore. Precise, or uh, National Gallery Cafe, to be more precise. Or the National Gallery Cafe Toilet, probably. To be <laughs> Brutally honest. Uh, next, I've got what in my gut? The ground force team. <laughs> <laughs> Toma Salata. Oh. <laughs> it's not as even more surprising. The tennis right. racket, says Cat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, the answer is uh, a brain. The frankly startling news that our guts have a primitive brain, uh, or as Diarrhea Digest helpfully puts it. <laughs> Uh, next, nudists with attitude sees what? Quiz show host. <laughs> Get them bloody clothes off. <laughs> Is it uh, nudists with attitude sees up in the cold weather? <laughs> uh, it isn't. It is, in fact, the high ground. Uh, next, I let a robot what? Host my quiz show. <laughs> <laughs> and there was a significant improvement. <laughs> Is it, uh, Relentless. Yes. I let the room. It says the voice of the people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that the news of the world? <laughs> I don't think they say that. Is she a friend um, of yours, Angus? Good. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's right, love. It's only another 20 minutes to go. <laughs> yeah. God damn. Uh, if you've got a friend, you're both in luck. <laughs> Wow, look at his face. Ah, that strange feeling of deja vu. Uh, <laughs> believe you believe the rest so of the country. <laughs> <laughs> look at his actual face. God damn. That's like, that's pure disgust. Ah, that strange feeling of deja vu. Uh, <laughs> believe you believe the rest so of the country. <laughs> <laughs> uh, operate on my knee. And lastly, <laughs> and what cure diarrhea? We show a host. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, cork? <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, coconut macaroons. Uh, this what? is a theory that uh, coconut products can relieve chronic diarrhea. Mm -hmm. uh, although, according to Diarrhea Digest, we haven't seen any hard evidence backing this up. <laughs> Which uh, knee-jerk reaction means at the end of tonight's run, uh, this week's softies uh. are Ian and Ross with seven, while this week's uh, hard nuts are Paul and Gerald with 12. <laughs> Before we bid them a fond good riddance, the minor irritation of our <laughs> caption competition... Prime Minister threatened by tiny comet. <laughs> <laughs> 
Mystery sniper shoots hole in Estelle Morris. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, thank you. TV man saying, slept with anyone interesting this week? <coughs> um, the last assault. Uh, oh, I wouldn't uh, bet on it. <laughs> I would. I would. Is Mr X just out of shot? <laughs> <laughs> on which uh, elevated note we say thank you to our panellists, Ian Hislop and Ross Noble, Paul Merton and Gerald Kaufman. And I leave you with news that after persistently trying to sell household goods door to door, a Bristol man is set upon by angry housewives. <laughs> yeah. The hell? Scientists uncover proof that self-hypnosis techniques carry no guarantee of success in life. Mm. And in London, a meeting breaks for five minutes after the mayor is informed of the death of his favourite, Newt. <laughs> good night. And goodbye. Who is they? That was certainly buried Angus's career, but if you fancy <laughs> digging up something dirtier still, have a gander at UK TV drama tomorrow. Waking the Deads at 9. Damn, tonight, bro! On G2, though, we're keeping things on the light side. Jonathan Ross gets hair envy. Next. That was uncalled for! <laughs> Jesus. I, I thought the one where, again, like, right after the stuff came out, I thought that was brutal. That was worse. Like, that was, like... They just, like, actively were just, like, disgusted with him, and they wanted him fucking gone. Like, the genuine disgust on Ian's face during that one part. Holy fuck, bro. Like, that was, that was mad uncomfortable <laughs> to watch. That, that was, that, I mean how public too that was again like if i had watched this with un with no context i i would have probably assumed that they were ribbing each other but like knowing it was legit and how much they actually wanted him out fuck <laughs> like it's crazy how fucking public that was holy shit yeah so that was the last episode of by angus deaton the episode after this apparently is hosted by Paul Merton, and it's the only episode he's ever hosted, I believe. Um, so maybe, and I believe that's also the only episode where he's not a panelist outside of um, outside of the series that he wasn't on. Um, so maybe we'll do that one next. I don't know, but whew, that was fucking Jesus Christ, <laughs> Jesus. Well, that is it for another reaction. Have I got news for you? I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you guys for watching. If you liked the video, be sure to leave a like. If you didn't like it, don't. If you want to follow any of my social media links, they're all in the video description down below, as well as names of all my Patreons. If you didn't know, you can be a Patreon on me for as little as a dollar or one pound, and you get extra reaction videos, as well as the reading comments up to date early, sometimes more. With all being said, though, my name is Taffer. This has been my, uh, what are we at, 13? 13th reaction. Have I got news for you? And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.